our time for us to get set and bring to you an absolutely fantastic session right here. Thank you so very much as we set the stage on fire for our next segment. I'm about to present someone here on stage who all of us know very, very well. He's known to be a creator of change. He's known to encourage the youth to follow their heart and passion and go out there. He is a politician and a philanthropist, a member of the Lok Sabha, and he definitely touched hearts of the entire nation when he was a part of the Indian cricket team. He's played every international format of the game that you've ever heard of. Also the recipient of Padma Shri. May I request all of you to please put your hands together as I present to you Padmashri Gautam Gambhir. Please do put your hands together as we extend a very, very warm welcome and present to you Padmashri Gautam Gambhir, a politician, a philanthropist, former Indian cricketer, someone who has such heart in every format of the game that he has ever, ever played and definitely an inspiration for us. Let's extend a very warm welcome. Thank you so very much for being here and taking this conversation forward, taking this note forward and making sure that we have the best of learning. Like you mentioned, the chicks behind leadership, the journey from humble beginnings to overcoming adversities and becoming a leader boy on par will be none other than Miss Pooja Jain from Times Network. Let's hear a round of applause for Pooja as she steps forward for this very candid and interesting conversation. Welcome Pooja. You're known for your words and please wind the story together. Over to the two of you. It's such a honor to share the platform with not only an internationally celebrated athlete, but with an individual that I and many in this room have long admired. A huge round of applause once more for Mr. Gautam Kumbi. Thank you. All right. So the theme tonight, as you know, Gautam, is the big shift and measuring the forces of change. Five years ago, you retired from all formats of the game and began your second innings as a member of parliament. So given the heights of success that you'd achieved on the field, on the pitch, was that transition to life off the field ever something you feared? Honestly, yes, I did. Because all my life, actually, I've only played cricket. And when you've played for such a long period of time, the moment you decide to retire, you actually wake up the next morning and think, what next? Because there is nothing to look forward to. Right. And that's, that's the reality because, and it happens not only with me, it happens with a lot of sportsmen, the what to look forward to because the opportunities and the options are very few. It's not like a Bollywood or being a politician where your career is probably prolonged for, for a very long period of time. If you see any sportsman, how long does he play international or competitive sport? He only plays till 35, 36. And he's done that for such a long period and for years and years, day in, day out. Absolutely. Yeah, so sometimes you realize that the next morning is probably the toughest morning because when there is nothing to look forward to, obviously the energy is not there, the excitement is not there and it has, it actually happened with me as well. What candor ladies and gentlemen, I believe that deserves a round of applause, the honesty and the humility. And a follow up question for you there, I think professional athletes are perhaps conditioned to view competition and winning through a certain lens and to view leadership and winning as going hand in hand. But Given that you've evolved from a former cricketer to a philanthropist and a, and a politician, I'd like to understand how your definition of leadership has changed. Look, I think leadership, for me, the definition of leadership hasn't changed one bit, whether I was a sportsman to whether I, was, I became a politician, nothing at all. For me, I think the qualities of a leader remains exactly the same. And I can keep talking about it, I can talk about it for hours, that what a leader needs to be like. For me, I think the most important thing for a leader is that leader never, never compromises on his values and his beliefs, irrespective of whether you're standing alone in front of the whole world. You still believe in your values, which are very, very important. And the most important thing of a leader is that you earn respect out of love. You don't earn respect out of fear. 
So yes, you can talk about leader needs to be compassionate, needs to be humble, needs to be accountable, needs to be responsible, all those things a lot of people must have heard day in, day out. But for me, I think the most important attribute of a leader is that you actually earn respect out of love, not because of fear. That deserves a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. And Gautam, let's talk about another facet of leadership, and that's really selflessness. What role in your personal experience does selflessness play in finding success as a leader? Look, selflessness is not just a word. And we have heard about this word quite a lot of times that a leader needs to be selfless. Selflessness is a word, is a thing that how you look life as. I think if you look life as being someone where or in a team sport or in a nation where nation first philosophy is there or for example if you play, if you're a sportsman and you think about team first policy you will always be selfless selflessness is just a way of living life it's not something which you can buy in the market or you can actually over a period of time can probably groom yourself into being a selfless leader i think it's just the way you look at life it's just the way you treat human beings it's just the way about giving back to the society. It's not only about taking. So for me, I think this word of being, a se of being selflessness, I think it's used very casually, which should never be. Because anyone can be selfless and anyone can be selfish. Yes, when people talk about leaders being selfless, I think it is important to be selfless, not only as a leader, but as a normal human being as well. Because how much is important? The important thing is that how much can you give it back to the society and make your country proud or make every individual happy? That is what is all about being selflessness. So I think this term should not be used very casually. It should be used in a very, very uh, specific manner. And I think selflessness is something which is a very, very important quality in a human being. If you have it, I think it's a massive, massive plus. Phenomenal. Yes, please keep the applause coming, ladies and gentlemen. And Gautam, we hear time and time again growing up from our parents, you know, find your calling or from friends, you will find our calling. And you're one such individual that seems to have found many, multiple callings, if you will. So of the multiple hats that you've donned, what might you characterize as the three most career-defining moments, if I had to limit it to just three? Oh, that's a tough one. I think three career-defining moments. I think people definitely remember my 1997 or a 75 in those two World Cup finals, but Actually, those are not the most important moments or the most probably career-defining moments in my life. I think uh, a lot of sacrifices that were made, and I remember one incident, and, uh, which I have not spoken too much about, and I probably can share it with you people. Please. I remember playing my first World Cup, which ended up being the T20 World Cup, which we ended up winning. That was my first World Cup of any sort, and I remember the first game got washed out. The second game, I got a duck against Pakistan, and I, when I was coming back, and I was actually thinking that I, this journey can't finish like this. The script can't be, uh, can't be finishing like this. And the second game was against New Zealand. And I remember leaving that hotel. Probably that was probably the most important game of my career. Obviously, I've got dropped many times in my career. And, but that particular game was probably the most important game. Because had I not performed in that game, I probably would have finished my uh, World Cup there and thereabout. Right. So uh, before leaving that room, I told myself one thing that irrespective of what happens today, I'm going to try and play on my own terms. I'm not going to listen to any outside noises. This is the moment where I have to start believing in myself and play on your own terms. When I come back in this room in the evening, I should have no regrets coming back in this room, whether I perform or I don't perform. And fortunately, I ended up getting a 50 of a 21 or 22 balls, and that changed everything. So the most important thing was that I actually promised myself something which actually I've never promised in my entire career that I'm going to go out there and play on my own terms when the chips were down, when my back was absolutely, when I was down and out. So when you're down and out, that is the most important thing, and that actually was the career-defining moment of my life. Wonderful to hear that. And it's not every day you're treated to such anecdotes, ladies and gentlemen. I, and I want to switch gears for a moment to Gautam and talk about the Gautam Gambhir Foundation because it has truly transformed the lives of members of the East Delhi constituency, its residents, and among the many causes you care about, be it women's safety, or combating climate change, or feeding the hungry, or educating the underprivileged, you're a loud and proud supporter and champion for diversity. Why is this particular cause so close to your heart? No, I think 
I think I don't talk too much about my foundation because when we started this foundation, I was actually not a politician and I never wanted to use that for my own political mileage as well. But yes, one thing which is very close to my heart is something not when we, when we feed the needy or other things, when we look, take care of the martyrs. One thing which is very, very close to my heart was educating uh, the girls of the sex workers. That is something which is very, very close to my heart and the reason behind that is because there is such a strong confidentiality clause where you don't know who you're sponsoring. Tomorrow, if that girl comes in front of me, she would not know that I funded her education and vice versa. She doesn't know that who I am. And uh, when, you, when you try and change the life of someone where you cannot take political mileage out of, so that something becomes very, very close to your heart. And more, more importantly, the vision for the foundation is that if we can touch many more girls like that and if we can stop them from going into that same trade, that is probably one thing which remains very close to my heart and hopefully we can try and probably increase the number of girls and try and not wow. probably push them into the same trade. And I hope, I think, uh, everyone, every one of us have, should take some cause or the other so that we can change the society. We salute you. We certainly do. And uh, Gautam, so many of us know Gautam Gambhir, the persona, and not necessarily Gautam Gambhir, the person. And why we've gotten a sneak preview today. What more can you tell us? What more can you leave this audience with tonight so that that's a part of the past? Look, I say things sometimes I get a lot of flag for, but I'm fine with it. I say things how I look. But one thing I definitely would want to say is that I think be careful of social media. I think that is something which not a lot of people would talk about. Yes, I think yes, there are times when people laugh at it. But I'll tell you this. For the next generation, I think the biggest cause of depression would be social media. And the reason why I'm saying is that something, if you can spend money, if someone has money, he or she can create a perception about anyone or everyone sitting in their AC room just by spending money, and that perception is not right. A lot of things are said, whether it's good or ugly or bad, that's not true on social media. Don't get addicted on social media. Yes, the youth of this nation, this country, they are addicted. Any kind of addiction is bad, whether it's alcohol, whether it's social media, whether it's, whether it's gadgets. Because people do not talk about it, because they know that they need a lot of approval from social media. And I have never, ever lived my life thinking that what is said about me on social media, whether it's good or bad, and what, whether I need, and whether I need approvals on social media or not. That is not the way to live life. So for me, I think, before making a perception about anyone or everyone, whether be it a politician, a sportsman, a Bollywood star, first meet that person individually and then have his image rather than seeing what is said on social media. So that is one message I would definitely want to give because people do not talk too much about social media and I, we know why people do not talk about it because there is so much of approval that is needed from social media which probably is the fakest thing that has happened in the country. We just heard that we need to meet that person before coming to conclusions. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have met Gautam Gambhir. Huge round of applause. Thank you. And he has very generously offered to open up the session for some light audience Q&A. So if you do have a question in the audience, please raise your hand, introduce yourself. Keep the question short and crisp. We will try and get you a mic. And this opportunity does not come every day, ladies and gentlemen, so take advantage of it. Yes, here, gentlemen, right here in the front table with the gray blazer, if we could kindly hand him a mic. And if not, sir, we'll have you project your voice in the meantime. Good evening, sir. Gautam, good evening. Good evening. Uh, we all love you a lot. Uh, and we definitely think that uh, your World Cup innings was definitely one of the milestones of your career. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, you know, my question is not really a question. Uh, since you are an MP from Delhi and I belong to Delhi, I have a comment and uh, I would request you to also, if you are already doing something about it, you can always comment about it also. I think pollution is one big problem, Gautam. I, I would request uh, that as a young MP of Delhi, uh, you should uh, definitely make sure that enough noise is made in the parliament and enough resources are brought into, you know, controlling the pollution in Delhi. You can, of course, add if you're already doing something about it. But I think much more is required to be done. Much more. Not only much more. Lots and lots. And it's not only a responsibility. I'll be very candid and honest with you. No government, no MP. Yes, I can create an awareness. We can, we can probably ask this or raise this issue in the parliament. But it is a responsibility of every individual. I've got two young daughters. I know, I know what they go through. 
couple of months back, when I was speaking to a doctor, 75% of children in Delhi were on nebulizers. It is our Delhi. It is Delhi belongs to 2.5 crore Delhiites. It is not a responsibility of seven MPs or a state government. All of us together needs to create that awareness. The smallest of steps are equally important. What are we going to leave behind for our next generation? When they grow up, tomorrow if my daughters ask me this question, that what have you left behind? I can't even live in Delhi. I can't even breathe in Delhi. I have never ever thought in my entire life that there would be a vacation because of AQI. When I was growing up, there used to be only two vacations, summer and winter vacations, as all of you must have experienced. But today, if, there's, if there is monsoons, we get water logging rain for, uh, holidays. If there is pollution, we get schools get shut, which is so unfair. All of us are stakeholders of Delhi. All of us are stakeholders of India. So we all together need to create that awareness and take the smallest of steps. And I'm sure, I think from your point of view, who better than me, to be honest, because I've got young daughters. I want to leave something behind which they can be proud of, not only from my own point of view, but from the, from the Delhi point of view as well. So they can be living here happily and in a right environment, and they can breathe freely. And one thing which actually I took up was trying to finish off that Ghazipur landfill. It's a massive stigma, and that comes in my constituency. It is Asia's biggest landfill. And the reason why I took up that issue was because I remember when I was getting into politics and I was actually campaigning for my elections, I went there and I went to a place where I saw this lady and this young boy and what kind of an air they were breathing. And I actually promised themselves, I don't care whether I stay as an MP, whether I win uh, an MP seat or whether I stay as a politician, but I'll keep raising that point day in, day out because there are thousands and thousands of families which live around that area. So it is our responsibility. So I'm sure, I think all of us together will definitely, if we have the right intention and honesty, can change Delhi because it's still not late and it is never late. Whenever you decide to start, that's the right moment. That's off to that. Thank you. Yes, the gentleman right here, if you could please stand up in the black blazer. If we could kindly get him a mic quickly, please. And uh, sir, good evening. Thank you for being here. Please do introduce yourself before putting forward your question. Uh, hi, Gautam. Uh, this is Yogesh Kukreja. I'm uh, co-founder of a QSR chain called Lab Lab Levinis. In fact, uh, I'm meeting you uh, for the second time. I had played one cricket match with you at Radha Krishan tournament. You yeah, yeah. Cambridge, Cambridge Foundation. Cambridge, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, in fact, what, what I wanted to ask is, and now obviously most of us know that, how has your uh, sports background contributed to your present discipline and your now career, which is politics. Because I know in this room, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs are sitting. There are some entrepreneurs who work out every day. There are uh, some entrepreneurs, one of, I am one of those, that we think we career and we will do exercise. I'll give you a very short answer of this. How my sports profession helped me in my political profession. That will to fight at every given point. Because it's not that it's easy for me. From being a sportsman to a politician, it's a completely different field. There are far more frustrations in this field as compared to there because there everything was black and white. Everything that happened when I was a sportsman was in front of the whole world. Success, failure, good, bad, everything happened in front. But here, there's a lot of gray. But one thing that, that I learned from my earlier profession was that fight till the last drop of your blood because it's very easy to give up. It takes a second to give up. It takes a lot of courage, day in, day out, years of courage to continue going. So that is one thing that has helped me stay into this for the last one and a half years. Beautifully right. put. So, Thank so I guess you, sir. Message for all of us. We should spend some time on exercising. <laughs> we should yes, some sir. time for working. More importantly, never give up. <laughs> never give never. up. Never. Yeah. Because you're not allowed to give up. The moment you give up, then you give up on everything. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful. All right. Yes. The gentleman right here towards my left. In the glasses. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, hello, Gauti, sir. Uh, Jaydeep here. Uh, 2007 and 2011 World Cup, we cannot leave it around. It's in our, it's in our blood cells. Uh, I want to ask just one question. The biggest prices innings, 75 and 97. The emotional control you had, please discuss about that. I think it would be a great honor to you know hear all those integrities of the crisis management, which all we deal about in daily life. See, the emotional control was that, first and foremost, 
I knew that there were 140, at that time probably 100 or 140 crores people backing me. So I was not walking alone. So that itself was a massive strength which I was carrying. And second, which is the most important thing, was staying in the present. The contest was between bat and ball. It, the occasion do not matter. Whether you play a club game, whether you play an international game, whether you play a game of that magnitude, the contest still remains the same. So the moment occasion gets better of you is when you start panicking. I had never thought about it, whether I was, uh, that I was playing a World Cup game. I never practiced differently. I never trained differently. I slept properly. I did exactly the same thing what I was doing when I was playing a Ranji Trophy or a club game. People might just say that I'm saying it for the heck of it, but that is the reality. And that's because every time I trained for years and years, I actually trained thinking that I need to win that one particular contest. So cut it down to the smallest of thing rather than thinking that I need to chase 270 or I need to set up 200. Cut it down as much as you can and take it to that point which you can control because you cannot control beyond that one particular contest. You cannot control, you cannot control that 275 what you were chasing, but you can control that one particular delivery what you were facing. So when I was able to cut that down and take it down to that level, Obviously, all the other things took care of itself. The performance is just a byproduct. First, you have already played that inning in your mind one night before. When people talk about it, that you go into, a, go into an important meeting or an important event, you've already done that one night before, a couple of days before. You don't do it right there. So those innings have, have already played in my mind. So that became much easier for me. And more importantly, I knew that there were 100, 100 crore people praying for me. And that prayers are far stronger than any other thing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are completely out of time, but I really have to think. One last question. Okay. Upon request, please, sir, last question for you. Hello, Gautam, sir. Hi. So, as you have won two World Cup for Indian, uh, Indian national country, so I would ek to, like... Ek to, yehi sabse bada, sabse badi problem in our country. I haven't. It's You're, the team. You are part of the team. I'll, yes, I'm yeah. part of the team. We need to get out of this obsession of individuals. We are... Let's not be obsessed. Let's be obsessed with India. Let's be obsessed with team first philosophy. XYZ, we need to cut this hero worship thing. I was just part of that team. My job was to contribute. My job was to score runs. I have not done anything which I was not supposed to play. There was someone who's taken a wicket. There was someone who's contributed with me as well. So never ever, whether I'm sitting here, whether someone else from that 2011 or 2000 comes and sits here, Never say that you. Say that Team India because we represented 100 or 140 crore Indians. We represented you. So it is not only us. You guys have won that World Cup as well. So change that mindset. Once you change it, once you change that question, things will change. So in that context, my question is that what different Indian team needs to do to win the next World Cup? Look, I think uh, because I'm a, bro I'm, a, I'm a commentator now, I've said that doing the commentary as well. When you go into those big tournaments, you need to be courageous. And courage doesn't come just like that. You need a lot of mental strength to be courageous. Because the moment you start thinking, what if I make a mistake? What if you make a mistake? So what? Human beings are bound to make mistakes. So what if India, if you go out there and try and be positive and aggressive and courageous and fearless, and, and you end up making a blunder? So what? I think ultimately, it's the most courageous team that goes on to win the World Cup, not the most talented. And that is what Australia has shown and that is why India has not gone on to win an ICC event for such a long period of time that somewhere down the line, we've lacked that courage, we've lacked that fearlessness because we're always thinking about not making a mistake. It's okay to make mistakes. The moment they start thinking it's okay, okay to make mistakes, sky can be the limit. Thank you. Wow. Well, Gautam just spoke about courage, and I want to say it takes a lot of courage to open up and share so many anecdotes from your personal journey and your professional journey in front of fans around the world you've never met. So once again, huge round of applause for Gautam Gambhi. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Pooja. Thank you so very much. Let's hear a round of applause for Gautam Gambhi as we take a moment and personally thank you for your time and present you with a token of our appreciation. Please do put your hands together as I welcome none other than Mr. Ajay Chitkara, CEO and MD of Ecom Express, joining us here on stage. And that in very athletic way forward. Let's hear it up for him, please. 
Gautam, very, very candid conversation. We had some very interesting inputs from you. And like you said, all you've got to do is have that never give up attitude. Keep trying and life's never going to fail. On those very inspiring notes and tokens, make a round of applause once again for none other than Gautam Gambhi. Let's hear it up.